So the craziest thing about the Apple Music 100 albums list was the was that Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston weren't on that list. And there was a bunch of other people too that wasn't on the list. Um, and even something like Outcast was really low on that list, which is like insane. But I don't think before I get into Mariah, I'm going to talk about Whitney because on my last video I made about the about that 100 list, um, I mentioned how the Bodyguard should have been on that list, and I think we, especially as Mariah Carey has been disrespected over the years by the industry. I think Whitney Houston's been disrespected as well. Like Whitney Houston was not only beautiful, but she was the voice. Like, but when she came out, I think it was like 85. Diana Ross is still kind of dropping hits here and there. She like, she was still, even though she came out with the Supremes in the sixties, Diana Ross was still th that chick. But then Whitney dropped, you give good, good love and saving all my love for you. And those, those tracks and the greatest love of all. And it was over. And Whitney Houston created a new platform. She, she was a new generation of female R and B vocalists on the pop charts. She opened the door for Janet Jackson. She opened the door for Jody Watley on the R and B charts. Uh, she opened the door for Anita Baker. She opened the door for Regina Bell. And then we get to the early 90s, you know, Tony Braxton, uh, Mary J. Blige. Uh, Whitney Houston was so great vocally. She made so many great songs that is totally disrespectful for Apple Music not to put her at all <clears throat> on that list. And, you know, and to be honest, like today, people, people put Beyonce on top of everything, right? And Beyonce is great. This is Beyonce's great. I'm not, it's just not a rip on Beyonce. But I think the person kind of kicked all this stuff off was Whitney. Because even with, okay, so I, I mentioned the female vocalist. And then we get to um, the 90s uh, in Vogue, because there was like four Whitney Houstons. <laughs> so it was like in Vogue, who opened the door for TLC, who opened the door for Destiny's Child. So we probably wouldn't even get to Beyonce if it wasn't for Whitney kicking that off in 1984, 85. So the first time I left out was Mariah Carey. So uh, the first time I heard Mariah Carey, I was uh, I was a DJ in college. And I think I was a music director too, but I was always looking for new songs to play on the radio or classic songs. So I was at Camelot Music in the mall and I was looking for stuff and I saw this single. And it was this cute curly haired chick on this single. And her name was Mara Carey or Mary Carey. I don't know. I don't know who she was. I just know she was fine. <laughs> and I said, well, this thing's only 99 cents. If it sucks, then fine. I just give it away to somebody. But if it's good, I'll play it on my show. I went back to the radio station, uh, WZIP. At the, I think it's AUP at the time, but WZIP, FM in Akron. I go, so there's a back table where we used to have our meetings, but there was a place where you put a cassette in. I put the cassette in and it was Vision of Love. I put Vision of Love in and my girlfriend at Tab um, I saw her there and say, what are you doing? I was like, I'm going to play this new cassette because she seen me do that before. So okay, I'm going to get something, something to eat. I played the cassette. By the time she came back, I played that thing 10 times. She walked back in and was like, you're still playing that song? I said, yeah. <laughs> I could not believe the vocal on Vision of Love. I never heard such a great vocal. And, and again, Whitney Houston is the voice, but Mariah was right there with my, with with a kicker. She could sing, she could hit notes like Minnie Ripperton and Denise Williams. Like, that's something that Whitney couldn't do. Whitney was probably four octaves, four and a half octaves, and Mariah Carey was the full five. But I could not believe the vocal that came out of this, this chick. I had no idea who she is. And then I found out she was a Mariah Carey, and then the debut album came out, and that was great. The Unplugged album came out, that was great. She dropped Dream Lover, which sampled uh, the, the sample that Big Daddy King used on Ain't No Half Stepping. Because Mary J. Blige, you know, of course, she's the queen of, of hip hop, hip hop and RB, hip hop soul. I get all that stuff. But I don't think Mariah Carey gets a lot of credit about the about the hip hop sample she used and the artist that she used. Like the Fantasy Remix by Puffy, but the Fantasy Remix featuring Old Dirty Bastard. She didn't pull Method, Method Man. She could have pulled like uh, like Michael Jackson, Jazz Jackson. They both both use Heavy D. And I love the Hepster. Heavy, Heavy D is one of the most underrated rappers ever. But but back then, if you need a need a guy to go jump on a track, it was like Heavy D. She pulled Old Dirty Bastard, and she didn't pull Meth. She could have. She pulled Dirty. Nobody was pulling Dirty. She had the song Breakdown with Crazy Bone later on. Uh, that was great. Like 
I don't think Mariah gets enough credit for for that hip hop R and B hybrid because she was just so good at everything, and she could sing power ballads, my all, open arms, hero. How can the same woman sing a almost like a power power ballad, ballad a song that can kind of make you cry like hero, and then make a remix with the Brad and Missy Elliott using the Ain't No Fun <laughs> uh, sample on a Heartbreak. Heartbreak. I think Heartbreaker. Yeah, Heartbreaker. Who does that? The same woman did Heartbreaker and she did Hero. The same woman did Open Arms and Fantasy of Old Dirty Bastard. It's, it's insane, her talent. And she wrote. She writes. All I Want for Christmas was early in her career. And I love that song from the very beginning because it sounded like an old, like '60s song, like a like a like a Phil Spector type of type of jangly Christmas song. And she pulled that off, man. And we're still hearing that today. So she's dropping these albums like every year, just kick, just dropping albums, dropping albums. Oh, one sweet day. I mentioned one sweet day before about Boys to Men. How great is she? <laughs> then she had a stumble. She made glitter. Um, movie was it? Terrible, but you know, it wasn't great. But the soundtrack was excellent. I didn't, I didn't. Her version of "I Didn't Mean to Turn You On" by Sher- uh, by Sherelle, magnificent, magnificent. The soundtrack is great. Film, uh, so- the glitter soundtrack. Get that? It's a great '80s soundtrack. But then she had the ice cream thing with TRL, which is pushing ice cream car, and then she said she had exhaustion, so she was kind of. It's it's almost like Mariah just hit her peak. It was it was going down because by then Britney Spears was out. You had Christina Aguilera, who was basically was a was a disciple of Mariah Carey. Like it's like Christina, and then later on, like Demi Demi Lovato and Ariana Grande, especially Ariana Grande. She is a true student of Mariah Carey. So then the Mariah looked down and out, and then she drops the Emancipation of Mimi. <sighs> it's like that. Uh, we belong together. Say something. Those songs fly like a bird. I haven't heard fly like a bird forever. And so I was doing this, I'll drop it in. That song, if you want to know what a pure vocal is, what a beautiful vocal is, because we don't get that in RB. Like a pure, clean, beautiful, soulful vocal, listen to Fly Like a Bird. Listen to Fly Like a Bird. So the, the so the Grammys come. She's poised to win album of the year. And they snubbed her. And she was sitting in the front row. And it's almost like when people see Beyonce like sitting at the Grammys and getting snubbed. The Mariah Carey snub was even worse for Mimi just because she's only won like four or five Grammys. And they, they've been kind of snubbing her, but they never gave her her due for, for album of the year. And here's there was her chance because that Emancipation of Mimi is like one of the best albums of this century. And they, they snubbed her. And I was like, man, that's just... Why would you do that to her? For all, for all, for all those records she ho- she she sells, you did this to her right in front of her face. It's ridiculous. And then one thing I found out recently is that she's number one at MTV Award. She's because first I said, man, Mariah Carey doesn't have an MTV Vanguard, MTV Vanguard Award. She's number one. Like Jeff Lopez and Pink has their Vanguard Awards, but Mariah Carey doesn't. And no offense to Jennifer, especially Pink. Pink, I like Pink. But there's no way they should have their Vanguard Awards before Mariah Carey. But MTV has never given her an MTV award. She's won a Vanguard Award for MTV Japan, but not here in the States. What is what is going on here? You can't say it's Tommy Mottola, because Tommy Mottola has been gone a, a long time ago. And you can't say she's not talented. You can't say she's a studio artist. Mariah Carey is amazing. So do yourself a favor. Just gra- close your eyes, spin the wheel, and just grab any Mariah Carey album. Any of them. Even the ones that's not maybe that great, which is few, which is a few, but not, you know, it's not that bad. Just grab any of them and just listen to the vocal, listen to the songwriting, listen to the beats. Mariah Carey is one of the greatest artists of our generation. And she never gets her dad, ta- uh, uh, she never gets her due as a songwriter. She never gets her due as, and she definitely doesn't get her due as a singer. Like, I don't know. You know, I can imagine this world without Mariah Carey. It, 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 you know, m- music would be just a lot less fun. So shout out to you, Mimi. You're the one of the greatest artists ever, even if Apple Music don't think so. <laughs>